This presentation will continue with the physiological adaptations in response to training. Muscle hypertrophy refers to muscle growth, which is the opposite of atrophy, which means muscles becoming smaller. In terms of um, what muscle hypertrophy is, with regard to training, uh, when we train and apply progressive overload and we train specific muscle groups, so we apply specificity as well, uh, this will lead to structural changes in muscle fibres, which will lead to hypertrophy or muscles uh, getting larger as a result of stimulated activities. Um, as a result, larger muscle fibres can generate greater forces, uh, and this has implications for power and strength activities such as weightlifting, Fast twitch fibres, which we'll cover a little bit later in this presentation, will also grow when stimulated, leading to greater power for sprinting. So when we think about muscle hypertrophy, it's important to understand applying progressive overload to a resistance training program, for example. If we add increased load, uh, increased sets and repetitions, uh, that's going to lead to muscle hypertrophy. Okay. Um, and this leads to, again, depending on what the type of strength training that we're doing, it could lead to increased muscular strength or it could lead to increased muscular power. Um, so looking at these diagrams, at this diagram here, you can see that muscle hypertrophy clearly shows the muscle is actually larger and the muscle atrophy refers to those muscles that we would experience if we were, if your program had um, had stopped or ceased, and of course reversibility would occur, and this means the muscles becoming smaller uh, and experiencing atrophy. Moving on to the effect on fast and slow twitch muscle fibers. Fast twitch fibers contract very powerfully, and they are ideal for sprinting. And slow twitch fibers contract slowly, and they use oxygen very well and they're ideal for endurance activities. A quick look at muscle under the microscope and you can see that um, the fibers look a little bit different in color. Now the slow twitch muscles look a little bit uh, a bit of a darker red or purpley color and the fast twitch fibers look much lighter and that's actually because of the increased oxygen um, within the slow twitch fibers, the increased myoglobin, which is the red um, compound or, or part of the muscle that actually contains the oxygen. So white fibers are fast twitch and red fibers are slow twitch. And skeletal muscles differ uh, according to this speed of contraction. Some interesting facts relating to muscle fibers. The ratio of fast to slow twitch fibers is genetically determined and this can't be changed. However, fibers can improve through specific strength and endurance training. This means that the fibers that we have can experience hypertrophy and they can function better with training. Sprinters and weightlifters have a larger proportion or percentage of fast twitch fibers and marathon runners have a higher percentage of slow twitch fibers. Slow twitch fibers contract slowly, they use oxygen very well and they're ideal for endurance events. They release energy very gradually, they're very efficient in using oxygen and generating ATP. They're resistant to fatigue and they're unable to produce the power of fast twitch fibers. And they're suited to endurance type activity, marathon, triathlon or cycling. Slow twitch fibers in terms of the relationship to improving performance, slow twitch fibers can experience hypertrophy. And when we train, when we apply progressive overload and we actually increase the intensity of our aerobic training with each session, we will experience uh, an increased capillary supply to muscle fibers, uh, which will improve gas exchange and movement of nutrients and waste products. So the capillary beds will increase in size and become more efficient in delivering oxygen. The number and size of mitochondria enabling more efficient energy production and the mitochondria really is what produces the ATP. And these particular muscle fibers contain more mitochondria naturally, but with training, more mitochondria are able to be produced. 
there's a significant increase in myoglobin content, which is the protein in the muscles, which actually transports oxygen uh, to the mitochondria, similar to what hemoglobin does in the blood. So as a result of training, hypertrophy of slow twitch fibers occurs. Endurance training increases the capillary supply and to enable efficient gas exchange at the muscles, and this improves the delivery of oxygen. So capillaries are the site of gas exchange and supply of oxygen and removal of CO2. And as mentioned, the capillary beds and the functioning and efficiency of the capillaries are much better in slow twitch fibers than fast twitch fibers. And with training, these capillary beds can increase in size and function. With training, increased number of mitochondria in muscle cells occurs, and this is responsible for producing the ATP for aerobic activity. So the mitochondria really is the powerhouse of the, of the cell, of the muscle cell, and it produces the ATP required for movement. Slow twitch fibers also contain more myoglobin, which as mentioned is like hemoglobin, but found in the muscles, and it delivers uh, the, the oxygen to the muscle, the working muscle. With training, this uh, myoglobin increases, as does hemoglobin. Fast twitch fibers contract powerfully. They're ideal for explosive activities such as sprinting and weightlifting. They contract really, really quickly and they release energy rapidly. So think ATP PC system, okay, sprinter. These muscle fibers contract rapidly and they use that system, the ATP PC, really well. But they do fatigue very quickly. They run out of energy very quickly due to the anaerobic systems providing energy. The body uses fast switch fibers for those explosive activities, weightlifting, field athletics, and sprint athletics as well. So fast twitch fibers, um, in terms of training, hypertrophy of these fast twitch fibers will occur if we train the correct energy system. If we do anaerobic interval training and we train the ATP PC system, we will be training the fast twitch muscle fibers. So the specificity principle applies here. You must train appropriately anaerobic training to improve these muscle fibers. And what happens is these within these muscle fibers, hypertrophy occurs, which means they grow, okay? They grow larger. They're able to contract a lot more quickly. Uh, there's an increased amount of enzymes which improve the functioning of the cell, the enzymes. Uh, the catalyst for chemical reactions that occur, such as the production of ATP, uh, particularly the ATP PC system. They increase in terms of their tolerance of lactic acid, allowing performance to be stained, sustained for longer periods of time. So as a result of training, the fast twitch fibers can tolerate the lactic acid a little bit better. Muscle contractions can be made more forcefully and quickly as they are a greater volume of fast twitch fibers. So when we train specifically, we train the anaerobic energy systems. And when we apply progressive overload, which means we gradually in increase our intensity with each training session, we're going to lead, uh, it's going to lead to hypertrophy of those muscle fibers. More forceful and powerful contractions will occur as a result. So hypertrophy of fast twitch muscle fibers, the ATP PC system uh, is the supply of energy, increased tolerance of lactic acid with training, so the more we train the anaerobic systems, the more tolerant of lactic acid and those muscle fibers tolerance will improve as well, and muscle contractions will be made more forcefully and quickly as a result, and sports like sprinting and weightlifting. So the specificity principle is important when we're talking about um, fast and slow twitch fibers. Fast twitch fibers benefit from anaerobic training, high intensity sprints and interval training and resistance training and slow twitch fibers um, benefit most from endurance type activities that engage the aerobic system.